Happy Friday once again. Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel coming at you. The Tennessee Diamond Vols. The Vols are back in action, back in action in SEC play this weekend as Ole Miss comes to town for the opening conference series of the year in Lindsey Nelson Stadium. And we'll look at this game. We'll look at Ole Miss, what they're bringing to the table, the pitching matchups for the weekend, and kind of what I'm looking for out of uh, Tennessee this weekend as well. But, um, you know, Tennessee come off last weekend against Alabama. They went one and two. And I think if they look back at that series and those two games, um, specifically Sunday, you got to think on that one. There's Tony Vitale and everybody has to look back on. That was a very, very winnable game that they let get away. And there was a lot of some, there were some interesting decisions in that one as to how far they went with pitcher. Again, I have a hard time figuring Vitello out in how he manages his pitchers sometimes. And I know it's difficult to do. I know what they're looking, or I mean, I know that they're looking for specific things. Guys are, you know, how I guess their velocity, how they're locating pitches and things. But, uh, you know, I've seen times where dudes are rolling along, get late into the game, they give up a hit or walk, and he pulls them out. And then I see, like last week, where I felt Sneed was getting hit pretty hard throughout his outing. and. There were numerous times that Alabama hit balls that were back to the wall, <laughs> but, um, and, you know, didn't go out. It finally caught up with them later on. And um, I, I just don't know what the thought process went. Part of me is starting to think that maybe there's not a lot of trust in that bullpen other than certain guys. I'm starting to see that a little bit. Um, I thought maybe Marcus Phillips could be a closer type guy. I still think he can be based on now he come in, he went one batter. I think there was some kind of an injury though that he come out for. Not sure if it's precautionary or what I haven't heard anything else about that. Um and then you have, I mean, Sneed normally comes in, throws five or six innings each time he comes in. You know, there's other guys. I just think they're looking for these guys to step up out of the bullpen. And uh, you know, Aaron Combs has been disappointing. I would say Kirby cannell has been pretty good. Um, he's done his job for the most part. I think he had one outing. It was a little rough, but other than that, he he's come in some tough situations and got out of it. He's done a pretty good job. You know, some of these younger guys have looked pretty good as well. You get like a Banky or a Loy. So do they – they've been more midweek guys, though. So do they start incorporating them into the weekend? Obviously, you know, they want their starters to go a long way. And, uh, you know, speaking of that, so let, let me start off talking about Ole Miss and – so they come in at 16 and six. They start off the year two and four. They've been playing good baseball ever since that. They've been playing good baseball. They took two out of three from South Carolina last weekend. They beat Southern Miss midweek this week. So you got to think this will be a, a tough matchup. So they're they're hitting. So I'll get into their pitching matchup. I know the Friday night guy and he's throwing again tonight will be Gunnar Dennis. So he comes in on the year. He has uh he's has over a four. ERA on the year. As a team, they're hitting about 280 for the year as well. And just looking at their stats as I go down it here, um, Ethan Ledge, I hope I pronounced that right, 384, six home runs, 25 RBIs. Jackson Ross, 347, five home runs, 24 RBIs. Andrew Fisher, nine home runs, 25 RBIs. That's your main three guys here. You got Ethan Groff, who, um, Hitting 313, four home runs, 12 RBIs. Looks like he is a uh, pretty big stolen base guy. So Ole Miss has some guys that can steal. Luke Hill, Ethan Groff, both stolen base threats. Jackson Ross looks like he has four on the year as well. So, you know, this is a team that's going to present some challenges. And especially with Tennessee pitching. Tennessee's pitching has been good up to this point. It hasn't been great, but I think the starters – so. You're looking at Causey going tonight. I, I think you can make a pretty easy case that Causey has been Tennessee's best pitcher so far this year. You know, A.J. Russell come out of the gate hot, but he had the one start against Texas Tech. He's not thrown a lot since then. He got hurt in the second game that he pitched. And, <coughs> excuse me. And then, um, you know, he threw a little bit last weekend. So he's still working his way back right now. And you've, Tennessee needs a healthy A.J. Russell. They can't afford to lose any pitchers in this staff. They really can't. And so, you know, a good hitting team with Ole Miss. Threats on the base paths as well. Your pitchers are going to have to do their job tonight. They're going to have, not just tonight, all weekend long, because this team can hit. 
pretty much any team you get through in the SEC is going to have big league capable hitters on this team. Causey goes tonight. Drew Beam goes Saturday. For Tennessee, it says to be determined on Sunday. So my guess is it's A.J. Russell. But, again, that is a guess on my part. I, I've guessed numerous times this year, and I've been wrong on it. Maybe they go Sneed in that case. I, I'm not sure. I would think if Russell was healthy, I would think that that's the way they go with it. Uh, for Let's see, for Ole Miss, so it'll be tonight, Causey versus Gunnar Dennis. Gunnar Dennis is 3-0 for the 4.56 ERA. Game two tomorrow, it's at, uh, I think, 6.30. Drew Beam, 3-1, 3.03 ERA versus Liam Doyle, left-handed pitcher. Gunnar Dennis is a left-hander as well. So Tennessee, I'm curious to see how they do with left-handers. Last year, that was a problem for them. Liam Doyle, 2-0, 3.95 ERA. Uh, Sunday, to be determined, versus Grayson Sonnier, Sonier, uh, 3-2, 4.9 ERA. So none of these guys throwing for Ole Miss. They don't really have ERAs that scare me. They So they are giving up some runs. But, you know, along the way, too, they're scoring some runs also. So if I go back and I look at, um, look at their schedule, and we'll look at game by game here. Let's see. So here recently, they beat Southern Miss 8-3, to lost to South Carolina 6-2, to won the Saturday game 12-3, to won the Friday night game 5-4. to Moorhead State, they had some pretty good numbers. Iowa, they had some pretty good numbers. So this is a team uh, earlier in the year against High Point. They scored 12, 25, and 12. This was after High Point actually beat them again. And then Ole Miss just went on to smoke them. Something got uh, woken up with Ole Miss during that game. Uh, for Tennessee, what I'm looking for this weekend, I'm looking for guys to have solid at-bats. That's what I'm looking for. I'm curious to see who Vitello goes with in his DH positions. I'm curious to see. There's a few spots there I think are still for the taking. I, I'm curious at some point, too. Dean Curley has kind of been struggling. If he continues to struggle, Fielding's start to be – I mean, it's still been good. Don't get me wrong, but he has had some errors, some misplays rates. I'm curious to see, do they uh, possibly look at Antigua now that he's healthy at some point? It's something worth monitoring, I think, for sure. Your infield guys, I mean, Burke, Billy Barrels, Christian Moore, they're solid. And they're outfield, I mean, you've got Dylan Dryling, Kavaris Tears, solid guys. That third spot, though, is it going to be Hunter Inslee? Is it Reese Chapman? Is it Dalton Bargo? Is it Robin Villeneuve? You know, you got to think Cal Stark catches at least a game. This weekend, so that means Cannon Peebles will either switch to DH during that game, or you know it'll be somebody else in it. I hope Bargo is healthy, but for the two lefties tonight and tomorrow night, you got to think that's Robin Villeneuve territory there. And uh, I want to see him step up a little bit more. He's done a good job. Don't get me wrong; he's hit good. But here against better pitching, spe specifically righties, they've started to figure him out. So a left-handed matchup may be his thing to come in because they've been getting him with that outside breaking ball. And he, he seems to bite on it numerous times. So left-hander tonight, I think that's probably going to, if I were guessing, if Peebles does catch, you're probably going to be looking at Villeneuve and uh, possibly Inslee both in the lineup tonight against the lefty. But uh, you could, I know last week he had Bargo in against the lefty. So, you know, Tony's not above going lefty against lefty. He He's not above doing that with his batting lineup. So it's interesting to see. And anything I guess is it's an educated guess on that. But I look for Tennessee. I want to see them come out and take care of business and win this series this weekend. They don't have to sweep it, but you got to at least take two out of three with it. I like their advantage in the pitching matchup. Uh I'm curious to see with Beam, because Beam's key is getting out of the gates hot. If he comes out good, he's normally pretty good. Teams normally get him early. He normally gets better as the game goes along. How does Causey pitch? Pit he pitched great. Against Alabama. He's been really good this year. 1.65 ERA. I'm curious to see how he pitches again tonight against uh, what looks to me like a pretty good hitting team. But should be a fun series with you. With it, I'll have a recap posted later tonight. Uh, this afternoon, round four, and we'll drop a Tennessee versus Texas preview for tomorrow night in basketball. And then this morning, I did the next day, Tennessee, St. Peter's after their domination. But my name is Frank Rock. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you have a great Friday. As always, go Vols. Thank you.